Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Racklin. FacepalmAmerica.com is where you can get more information on the show. Connect with us on social media, listen to past episodes, all sorts of things. It is another political week. I, I will tell you, it is really gearing up now that the year has started properly. People are stretching, waking up out of their winter holiday-induced stupors, and they are realizing, hey, this is a presidential election year. Things are really getting started. So over the weekend, we had uh, President Biden give sort of a kickoff speech talking about his campaign and 2024 and what the stakes are involved there. Uh, we're coming up in, in just a few days on what is going to be the uh, Iowa caucuses on the Republican side. Um, there are all sorts of things that are going on, and who better to talk about it with us than John Rothman, the host of Around the Political World with John Rothman. John, welcome back to Face Palm America. Happy New Year, and it's my pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. So uh, before we got started, you were uh, you tuned out the president in order to make space for us here on the podcast. What was the president saying? He was on the TV making a speech, I believe. Yeah, in South Carolina at the AME Church. Uh, he is actively going after the black vote. There's no question about it. His point this morning, as much as I heard of it, well, had to do with the Civil War. You know, I have to tell you, this is an amazing thing, Beowulf. If Donald Trump had been able to negotiate, there would have been no Civil War. And, and nobody would have known the name of Abraham Lincoln. He just would have been a president because Donald Trump's negotiating skills would have solved all the problems. Yes. Uh, and Hen of course, Henry, you listen. Henry Clay couldn't do it. Uh, the Daniel Webster couldn't do it. John C. Calhoun couldn't do it. Uh, Stephen Douglas couldn't do it. But somehow, somehow, Donald Trump could have managed to do it. I'm glad you figured that out. <laughs> so the interesting thing, of course, is that that also is a response to Nikki Haley, hmm. who uh, somehow could not equate the cause of the Civil War with slavery. Now, by the way, what was the cause of the creation of the Republican Party, for heaven's sake? Yes. Abraham Lincoln said... A nation cannot exist, half slave and half free, a house divided against itself cannot stand. What do you think he was talking about? Slavery, of course. Yes, and but, that's, <laughs> and that's, why, we have, that's why, we have, why we have a GOP now, and Donald Trump is not running for the nomination of the Whig Party, uh, indeed, in 2024. Listen, so, if people could see my the shape of my head, they'd understand why we need a wig. <laughs> anyway. Uh, if you could take a look at mine, they would realize that I'm pretty can close. See me, ladies and gentlemen, you can. <laughs> uh, but no, there, this is part of the kickoff, and it is a clear, uh, clear idea of where the candidates stand. When uh, President Biden spoke in Delaware, he spoke about the threat to American democracy. This is the third anniversary of the uh, uh, insurrection, and he calls yes. it an insurrection, which it was. Good. But Donald Trump responded. You know, those are all really very peaceful people. And he, rather than saying that uh, he is a threat to democracy, what did he say? Joe Biden is the threat to democracy. You know what that's from? Roy Cohen's playbook. Yes. Uh, Roy Cohen, who was the Trump family attorney and Joe McCarthy's attorney. If they accuse you of something, you accuse them right back just as hard. It and that is exactly... Donald Trump's tactic. It's it is a very slightly more sophisticated version of "I am rubber, you are glue." I think that's really what it <laughs> amounts to. It really. It, and it, let it, me it, tell you, Beowulf, and all of your listeners should stick with you because uh, that's what the glue is <laughs> about. But do you understand when you look at where we are in this campaign? And let me just try to summarize it quickly. I know you have questions for me. Uh, this is a contrast of vision. It is a tale of two cities. I uh, remarked. Uh, this morning on my podcast, that I was at the Democratic Convention in 1984 when Mario Cuomo described two visions of America, a city on a hill versus what was really going on on the ground. And of course, that's the difference now between what Biden is doing and Trump is doing. And these are clear definitions. Now, we are going to watch on Wednesday evening because there will be the last debate, uh, theoretically, between DeSantis and Haley. Yeah. And of course, President Trump is not going to show up He's going to do a town hall on Fox. Uh, and so, he, you know, he's he's refusing to debate. But if you take a look at the amount of money being spent in Iowa, listen, you know what? It's a shame. If only we were based in Iowa and we could do advertisements, why we'd be able to retire because they've True. spent, I would, I would guesstimate, over $100 million on advertising, on campaign work on the ground in Iowa, the whole nine yards, 
all for these caucuses, which take place in a week. Do you realize, Beowulf, that the next time we talk, they'll be in the middle of it, and then we'll maybe even have some preliminary results. You and I should discuss, you know, starting a radio station or a television station in uh, Iowa for the next time. That is assuming that we are still in a position, depending on the outcome of the election, to uh, have another presidential election in 2024, (laughs) because uh, there are serious questions. And given the fact that uh, President Biden is uh, focusing his campaign on the theme of democracy, it, it really is a question because it, it, there's a very good chance that Trump will take us from democracy to an authoritarian state. You mentioned we have to stop that. We do. And I, we I, let me tell you, do. it's not when I appear with you or when I teach my class this afternoon at the Fromm Institute up at the University of San Francisco, where I'm teaching a course on the uh, 2024 election. I am not going to take a partisan stand. I can talk with you in a partisan way. I want to give an objective analysis. And the objective analysis really tells me that this is a real choice election. And it depends what medium you're listening to. I listened to Fox. I listened to MSNBC. I listened to CNN, not to mention the major national networks. And I can tell you the vision of America is completely different. If you listen to Fox, your interpretation of events is completely different than, say, if you'd watched CNN last night in a program titled The Coup, because people see it so differently. I I had an experience this week. I read Liz Cheney's new book. Yes. I commend it to everybody. It is superbly written. It is solidly based. You know what I really learned in the book? I knew a lot of what was in there, of course, but all the back and forth I didn't know. But I learned about Speaker Johnson. And oh. his attempt to subvert the American election in greater depth than I'd ever heard before. Oh. Uh, the must read is Liz Cheney's book, and I commend it to everyone because I really think it's that important. I may have to dig into that because uh, knowing that he is leading the House of Representatives at the moment, and, you know, for the time being at any rate, um, it, it's frightening to know. It's frightening to know that the people in a position of power are. Uh, are just as much opposed to the essential structure of our democracy as Donald Trump seems to be. Now, you mentioned a moment ago the uh, final debate in the Republican Party, the uh, primary debates that are going to be coming up this week. Uh, it, there was a suggestion in an article written for uh, the Hill.com that uh, some Democrats thought that Biden should not be debating Donald Trump, and that would be... Uh, a very dramatic uh, deviation from tradition. And uh, I I see some of the arguments that are made. I mean, after all, Donald uh, Trump has, what, uh, 91 indictments against him. Uh, He is uh, an insurrectionist in a manifest uh, way. And um, he has proven himself to uh, be you know, duplicitous and uh, intimidating at debates. Uh, Now, on the other side, uh, it would be a very dramatic break with tradition. And in in a very fundamental way, I think it's important to publicly confront Donald Trump uh, with uh, his his uh, his crimes, his uh, uh, so many different things that that he has done in order to diminish this great nation of ours. We what agree. Are your, what, are, what are your thoughts about... Um, well, uh, let's about remind people, there was a, the Nixon-Kennedy debate in 1960, which was not a debate, but there were four appearances, joint appearances by them. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were no debates in 64, 68, or 72. There was a debate in 76, and there has been a, a joint appearance. Let's not call them debates, but these joint appearances in yes. each election since. It is impossible for me to conceive that either Trump or Biden would refuse to participate in these uh, encounters. They are necessary part of the American political system. And I I am in favor of having those discussions take place. Yeah. Frankly, uh, I think it would show a weakness on Biden's part not to appear at them. Or on Trump's part. Remember, Trump has refused to participate in any of the appearances of the Republicans, including the one that will take place on CNN uh, this uh, Wednesday night. Of course, what he's decided to do, uh, Donald Trump, is to appear separately in a town hall sponsored by Fox. Uh, to me, you know, it's it's shameful. But yeah. uh, the Republican Party is going to have to sort its own situation out. Let me also point out that the question of presidential immunity 
Uh, it yes. was revealed this morning, the Trump people are going into uh, Georgia and trying to uh, secure the fact that Trump can't be charged because he's a former president. Uh, that is something the Supreme Court is going to have to take up in the end. Uh, it is the argument the Trump lawyers are making in relation to uh, Mr. Smith's uh, accusations against him. Uh, I, I want to make this so clear that nobody can be confused. If you commit a crime as president of the United States, as Richard Nixon did, uh, Richard Nixon could not claim executive privilege. The Supreme Court ruled eight to nothing with Bill Rehnquist recusing himself because he knew everybody. <laughs> and what happened was that Nixon was forced to reveal the tapes. And the smoking gun tape of June 23rd uh, was the end of his presidency. Uh, I have to tell you that I believe that if the Supreme Court obeys its precedent, which it doesn't necessarily do, the Supreme Court will no doubt have to affirm the Nixon decision and deny Donald Trump immunity. If there is no immunity, Donald Trump will uh, have to face many more court appearances. But this is something that's critical. And let me just point out, three of the people on the court in the Nixon days, excluding Rehnquist, who recused himself, were nominated by Nixon to the court. They all voted against him, not because they didn't believe in executive privilege, not because they didn't believe that the president had the right to privacy, but because when a crime is in focus, uh, the court said no one is above the law. That should be what is followed. Now, let me point out, Rehnquist recused himself. Uh, Clarence Thomas should recuse himself. Uh, he probably won't. And just to answer the question definitively, only the justice, him or herself, can choose to recuse. No one can force a justice of the Supreme Court to recuse. Do you believe, I mean, I guess we've already settled the issue with regard to Clarence Thomas, if he's not going to be likely recusing himself, uh, do you think there is the same level of integrity on the Supreme Court as there was in the early 1970s? We will find out. <laughs> I suppose we will. I don't know if that's a very uh, heartening answer, but uh, yeah, drum roll, please. If the Supreme Court does not act to prevent Donald Trump from having immunity, I believe it will seal the fate of the Republicans and Donald Trump in this election. The American people's outrage will be overwhelming. But let me point out to you again, and I, 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 I sat down with someone the other day who is a Trump supporter, mm -hmm. who was very blunt with me and said, I don't care what they accuse him of. He was a good president, and I'm going to vote for him again. And I said, well, you know what happened on January 6th? And they said, yes, of course we know. But you can't blame Donald Trump for that. And I said, excuse me. Let me ask you a question. Why were the why was the mob assembled? Who assembled them? Who set the date? Who set the time? Who addressed them? I mean, I, I have to tell you, it is very disturbing. And as somebody who believes in American democracy, someone who believes in a two-party system, someone who was a Republican for many, many years, this attitude distresses me deeply. It is essentially a civil war all over again. And although Nikki Haley may not understand that slavery was the cause of the Civil War, I can tell you that without a doubt, the dissension in this country is caused by Donald Trump. And, well, we there has to be a response. Now, if I were still a Republican, I would be saying the same thing. And by the way, did you hear Donald Trump insult John McCain again? Did oh, really? you hear Donald? No. I mean, did you listen to him on his speeches this weekend accusing the president of being inarticulate because he's a stutterer. I mean, this to me is the lowest form. And I, I know I, 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 I never cease to be amazed at how low Donald Trump can go. He has demonstrated before that he is more than willing to mock people with disabilities, and uh, he's clearly continuing along those lines. Uh, can I raise another question, though, and that do. is foreign policy. I want to don't want to skip this over. Uh, first of all, the Middle East is erupting. Uh, as you know, the Israelis took out a senior Hezbollah official. Uh, more than 40 rockets have been fired from southern Lebanon into northern Israel. Uh, the Israelis have had to evacuate since the Gaza in, uh, invasion, uh, over uh, uh, 300,000 Israelis from the north of the country. It appears that we are on the cusp of a wider war. I think this is something people better understand. We have the issue.